Welcome back to the Better Than Yesterday podcast, where we focus on information, motivation, and realness. Five topics. It is Tuesday, March 31st, 2020, episode 158. First topic. We're getting a little personal here with this topic. So ladies, you got to stop faking orgasms and you got to start telling your partner what you need. You got to start letting, letting that man know the truth. You got to help him help you. That's my opinion. I, I, so I made a post uh, concerning this topic uh, and it was just saying, you know, ladies, stop moaning and um, tell the man the truth or whatever. And I got a lot of different um, um, interesting uh, feedback from that post. Uh, I think women, the best way to handle it is to tell a man flat out when he's not doing what you need him to do. Communicate. It's a communication thing. Communicate with him to what's going to make you feel good. What's going to get you to that pleasure that you're searching for. I don't think it's a good idea for you to just keep letting this guy um, do what he do. And, and there's no satisfaction that, that creates resentment. And all that, it's, especially if he's like not your first or the only guy you've been with, like, you know, it's better. It's basically what I'm saying. You're more knowledgeable. That is better. You want to make sure that guy, you can teach that guy. Now, true man, I understand it might be an ego punch, but you, if you really care about somebody, you want to satisfy them. And me being a man, that's how I feel. If you really care, so you will do what you need to do to um, satisfy that person, whatever within certain means, I would say, but for the most part, you're going to do, and you're going to make changes to help, uh, your partner, your lady get to where she needs to get to. So, uh, like I said, women, just tell your guy, I think that's the best bet of everything. Uh, if he gets upset, I mean, naturally, I think that's what's going to be initial one. Hopefully he doesn't snap or anything, but ego wise, it'll, it'll be a gut punch. But if he really cares, He'd be like, oh, shoot, I can be better. You know, he'll work on being better if he really cares about you. So, yeah, man, stop with the phoniness of faking it and just tell him and, and let it be out there. Because, he, you know, he the, the best bet is he's going to improve and you're going to get what you want. He's going to get what he wants and everybody's fine. Topic two. Look, you can only control what you can control. Don't worry about the things you can't control. I'm seeing a lot of that now. Everybody's so upset about the different things that are happening right now. And, and, and it's a point where a lot of this stuff is all out of our control. You can focus in on what you can focus in. You got issues with people not um, quarantining the right way or doing this the right way. Or this person can do this and that person can do that. Don't worry about the worry about what you what worry about what you can control, your family, your, your people, the people in your household, maybe uh, your your your, um, your parents, maybe your sister and brother. You can talk to them. Stop worrying about the other folks, what they're doing, because you can't control that. I had a teacher in fourth grade. Her name was Miss Irvin. Uh, she was actually, <laughs> if you watch football, uh, her husband was cousins with Michael Irvin. But anyway, whole point of uh, me bringing her up was she had a saying, uh, was it... Uh, Self-preservation is the first law of nature. So it's one of those things I knew in the beginning. Worry about what I can do. Worry about what OD can do. Uh, at this point, I have a child, so I have to worry about what Deshaun can do. And the people around me, I, I, I try to worry about those things or whatever. But I can't worry about uh, this person, that person, all over the place. I can only worry about the people around me. You see what I'm saying? So worry about you. Don't stress about what others are doing. Control what you can control. A lot of the, Also, a lot of this stuff out here... We, we have no control, especially now things have been said, laws have been made, uh, orders have been set where we just have to abide by them. And we can, like I said, control what we can control. Topic three. Look, I want couples, all couples. It's a strong suggestion. I'm, I'm not trying to force anybody here. I want all couples to, to think about putting your finances together. Look, I'm not, I, I, y'all know, I don't want to really, too, I, I try to back away from teaching that Dave Ramsey on the show. Now, that's what I follow. And he follows, um, or what he teaches is, you know, he, he wants all couples to put their money together and, and it helps. The reason why I say this, the reason I want to talk about you putting your money and finances together, because what if something happens to one of y'all? And in too, too often I watch that show and somebody gets on there and they says things that weren't following his teaching. They say things like, 
Well, I don't know how to handle any of this because he handled all the money or she handled all the money. You do not want to be in that situation. You both need to be on your money. Understand where everything goes. Now, you got the savers and you got the spinners. I get it, but you both need to know what's going on with your money because if something happens to the other person, you don't want to be lost. And that was always my thing. Even when I was married, I was trying to show uh, as much as I could with my uh, uh, my ex-wife. And the same thing, uh, I plan on me and my, uh, my lady I'm with now. I want me and her, but me and her have that already established. We're a little older and we went through both, so we both agree that. But we our money terms are very similar to what we're trying to fo um, move forward with. So, like I said, you, you you just need to know, both need to be knowledgeable about what's going on with your money in the household. That way, if anything happens, one sick, somebody die. I hate to say it, but that's part of life. We die. If somebody um, dies or somebody's sick and can't do what they normally do, you at least know what's going on and you can worry about that. You already got the emotional thing going on. You don't want to be worried about the financial thing, too. Topic four. It, it, Y'all got to make me understand something. What's with the toilet paper hoarding right now? Like, I, I don't understand the thought process behind. Like, there's no, like, if you go to the grocery stores, the panic's over. We're so, we didn't got used to the quarantine and then getting understanding the new routes and everything. So there's no need to have 70 things of toilet paper in your house. I, I'm I'm just being honest. Like, um, I heard the story about a guy who went to a hotel and he tried to steal 66 rolls of uh, toilet paper and he got caught and, they, and they're finding him. It's, uh, I think they're making it uh, uh, it's a felony. Um, I think it should be a misdemeanor and a fine, but hey, it is what it is. Um, Steph, just overdoing it. And um, I just don't get the whole toilet paper hoarding. I, I didn't understand this, this virus doesn't even equate to uh, anything that concerning that. There's a lot of panic on some things. Uh, at the end of the day, like even with the water, like at the end of the day, if things get that bad and we can't get bottled water or filter water, we still got the water in the sink. I mean, I, I, I just think everybody, as I said before, we need to calm down and rethink some of the things we're doing. And this, this is a survivor of the fittest type thing. When this is all over, we'll look back and we'll go, man, certain people didn't understand how to handle this and this transaction. So. Anyway, I just that that toilet paper hoarding thing. I, I have been hearing it since the beginning of this, but after I heard about that guy stealing that, I'm like, okay, this needs to be addressed. We can at least have a discussion about it. Final topic, top of five. You know, a lot of things can be sorted out, uh, resolved with just having a simple conversation. And I'm not talking about text, and I'm not talking about message. And these are two things that I—that's the best way I communicate. Or best way? No, I shouldn't say my best way to communicate. The most comfortable way to communicate would be text and a message. You know, because I don't really like talking on the phone. But I do love face to face. I do love having a conversation with somebody about any any issue. That will get so many things resolved if you just simply. Have a cover, and I'm not talking about screaming and yelling, hostile stuff. We're talking about two adults sitting down, having a conversation, and getting whatever they need to get off their chest. You see what I'm saying? Tell people how you feel. Don't be afraid. I think that's the best way of resolving all issues. Like I said, not the text and the message. And this is from a guy who most of his communication comes from that. But one, my, my best form is the face to face. I don't really like the phone because I can't see facial reactions and all those different things but like i said a, a lot of things can be resolved and sorted out of a simple face-to-face -face conversation all right thank you for listening to and watching the better than yesterday podcast um today again it's tuesday march 31st 2020 episode 158 uh hey look we still got goals to go attack even if it's just self-improvement goals in the house things you want to do so go out there and attack those goals <laughs>